Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to have a discussion on tight tolerance chambers, and more specifically, I want to talk about free bore diameter. Last week, I was watching a video by Bullets for Bucks where he was reviewing a Bagara chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum, and he was having terrible accuracy issues for factory ammo in his 300 Win Mag. Initially, I thought, oh, it's probably just a lemon gun. Then, yesterday, I watched Backfire TV where he talked about some of the guns he regrets getting. And one of them was a Bagara in 300 Winchester Magnum. And he kind of explained that he, sh he should have known better not to get a 300 Win Mag because of the free bore. I'll admit at first I was a little confused at what he was talking about. And then I text a friend who knows a lot more about ballistics than I do. And he started talking about free bore diameters. Then I started doing my own research, and boy, there's some interesting stuff coming up here in my video. The picture in front of me is the chamber dimensions for the 6.5 PRC. And when I talk about free bore diameter, so what does that really mean? Well, this right here is where the free bore is. So it's the little space where your bullet resides before it is shot into the riflings or the lands. And a lot of people think of free bore as in the space between the, the bullet and the lands. But in today's video, we're talking about the diameter of the free bore. So how much wiggle room is in there when the bullet is seated in there before it's fired. And in a 6.5 PRC, it is 2.2645. Now the diameter of the bullet is 0 0.2640. So that's pretty tight tolerance. And that's expected in a 6.5 PRC. So let's compare it to an older cartridge. Here is the 264 Winchester Magnum. I thought this would be a, a great example of an old cartridge that doesn't have near the tight tolerance the 6.5 PRC does. So let's get to right here. That's the free bore. And the number is 0 0.2680. Wow. So... <laughs> That's pretty far, so that's a decent amount of wiggle room. So let me show you what I mean by wiggle room. Here's just a fun little drawing I found that kind of shows it, what it's like. So, yes, this is supposed to be the neck, but let, think of this as really your free bore. So you see the space in between the bullet? That's not good if you don't have as tight tolerances for like a 264 Winchester Magnum. So when your bullet is fired, you know, there's going to be a tiny bit of space where you really could have a little wobble. Maybe that's being exaggerating it a bit, but it's going to be pretty non-concentric when it hits the lands or the riflings. And that's not ideal. Here is my freeboard diameter list. And we are going to start with the 224 caliber. At the top, as I said, we're going to go from best to worst. Uh, 223 Remington and 222 Remington. Usually there's four numbers. I couldn't find the fourth in any of the chamber dimension uh, drawings on Sammy's website. So I'm going to guess they're pretty good. I don't know if they're really the best, but check out 22250 Remington. 2245. And I feel like with it being five away is kind of the standard for tight tolerance. So that's really good. And then as you see, 22 Creedmoor, 0 0.2245, 224 Valkyrie, 2246, and then the 220 Swift, which is made by Winchester. You're gonna notice a theme here with Winchester here, 0 0.2260, not great. Now let's move on to six millimeter caliber. And to my surprise, the tightest tolerance for free bore diameter is a 240 Weatherby, 0.2434. So remember, the bullet's actually 0 0.2430. It's tighter than a six millimeter Creedmoor, six millimeter arc, 22 nozzler, and yikes. Check out 243 Winchester, 0.2463. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to the 257 caliber, and this is pretty darn good. Again, surprise, the 257 Weatherby has the tightest tolerance. Crazy. 0 0.2574. 25-06 Remington, that's really good. 0 0.2575. 257 Roberts, it doesn't surprise me. I don't think it's terrible, but it's not really good either at 0 0.2610. Same thing with 250 Savage and another Winchester. 25 WSSM, still not good. Let's move on to what everyone would think would be the tight tolerance caliber. And they're not wrong. Starting off with the 6.5 Creed, yeah, it's, it's going to have pretty good tight tolerances with the free bore. 0.2645, same with the 6.5 PRC, same with the 6.5 284 Norma. And surprising, well, maybe not surprising because we're seeing a trend here, the 65300 Weatherby is also very good, 0.2645. And then we take a little dip, but it's not that far off. The 260 Remington, 0.2650, the 65 Weatherby RPM is the exact same, which is interesting that it's not as tight tolerance as the 65300. Anyway, 26 Nosler is 0.2650, and then unfortunately lagging behind another trend we're seeing with Winchester it's not good 0 0.2680 let's move on to 27 caliber which has been known not to be the most precise caliber now the 270 Weatherby is on top again <laughs> really crazy 27 Nosler not too bad at all 0.2780 277 Fury, 0.2780, which I would say that's pretty tight for a military cartridge. And then 68 Western. This really surprised me. Maybe it shouldn't, though, since it's a Winchester. You would think a brand new cartridge that is advertised as a precision would be, well, have a little more precision in it. 0.2781. It's not bad, but it's, yeah, I would have expected more. And surprising, right below it, I for sure thought the 270 Winchester was going to be really bad, having a ton of room. But it's not that bad, 0.2783. And the same with the 270 WSM. Let's quickly go through 7mm. And surprisingly, all of them are not too terrible. On top again, 7mm Weatherby. 28 Nosler is also very good. 7mm 08 Remington is very good, 0.2845. And the 7mm Rem Mag, way to go. That one has really tight tolerances. In fact, you 7mm Rem Mag owners can brag a little bit because it beats out the 7mm PRC barely. 7mm WSM, not great. Again, Winchester is really lagging behind. Okay, drum roll, the moment we've been waiting for, everyone's favorite caliber, or maybe just my favorite, 308 caliber. So, anyone have guesses on which one has the tightest tolerances? Yep. The 300 Weatherby Magnum, 0 0.3084. Yes, it actually has a tighter tolerance than the 300 PRC and the 300 Norma. So, the 300 Norma and 300 PRC aren't too far off. 0 0.3087 and 0 0.3088. 300 rum and 30 nosler, not bad. 0 0.3091. And then the 300 WSM, well, since it's a Winchester, I'm surprised it's not terrible, but you know, I would, I'd rather see a little better. 308 Winchester, it's down there quite a ways, but you got to think of it as a military cartridge that needed to be chambered into a machine gun and also it needed to perform in the worst conditions so having really tight tolerances isn't ideal for a military cartridge and the same goes for the 30-06 because the 30-06 is originally a military cartridge so where's the 300 winchester let's look at the 300 wind mag dimensions Okay, guys, brace yourself. This isn't good for 300 Win Mag fans. 
Okay, so what are we looking for? So this is right here is the free bore. So the number we are looking at is, holy crap, that's bad. 0 0.3150. Remember, this should be closer to 0 0.3080. That's awful. Guys, I was shocked. I never would have thought the 300 Win Mag would be far and away the worst for this specific measurement in free bore dimension. And now before you guys start making all sorts of comments of my 300 Win Mag is the most accurate rifle, you know, all of that stuff, I absolutely believe you. I've seen incredible accuracy myself from uh, my dad's 300 Winchester Magnum. And what I'm just going to say is this free bore dimension stuff isn't the end all be all for accuracy. Is it extremely helpful? Yes. So just because the Win Mag has not so good dimensions doesn't mean it can't be accurate. In fact, if I was a Win Mag owner, I would highly recommend reloading and then loading the bullet as close to the lands as possible. So it doesn't have a ton of wobble <laughs> when it leaves. So there's not a lot of distance for it to go. But yeah, 300 Winchester Magnum is still the most popular Magnum and they are accurate. Uh, but I just thought you guys would find it interesting to see what all the cartridges dimensions are for that specific free bore 